Let's now look at testing signals in a Django application. Now Django includes a signal dispatcher and this helps decoupled applications get notified when actions occur elsewhere in the framework. Now an example of that might be when a user signs up to the application, that creates a user object in the database and you might want to respond to that action using a signal. For example, when the user is created, you might want to send a welcome email to that user and that is one way you can do this using a signal. So signals will allow certain senders to notify a set of receivers that some action has taken place. Now signals are quite difficult to debug typically in Django applications and that's why it's very important to write tests for these signals. Now I'm going to go to VS Code where I have the project open and I have created a file here called signals.py within the products application. And I've written a signal and we're going to write tests for this signal in a few minutes in the video. So if we look at this function here, it's called send welcome email and this is decorated with the receiver function in Django. And that comes from the Django.dispatch module. So we decorate a function with receiver and the receiver function takes a particular signal, as you can see here, and the signal that we are passing is the post save signal and the sender is the user object. So that's the model, the user model that we created in this application. When that user is saved, after the save is finished, in other words, post save, a signal is going to be sent and it's going to invoke the send welcome email function and it's going to send the sender in here, which is the user object, but it's also going to send the instance where that save function was called. And finally, we also get a Boolean created flag here and that determines whether the sender, which is the user, has been created in the database or if it's not been created, it's going to be false and that's just going to represent an update operation. So if you want to know more about signals, you can check out this documentation page on signals. But what we're going to look at is the actual logic of this function. So I've got a print statement here that's just going to test whether the signal is working. And if we are creating the object for the first time, in other words, if we have a new user that's just been created, then we're going to use the Django send mail function. And we're going to send an email that says, thank you for signing up and that's gonna come from admin at django.com and it's gonna email the instance.email. Now that's the user's email attribute, that's the email address where we're gonna send this email to and that is our signal. Now if you want to create a signal, what you also need to do in apps.py within the project or within the Django application is in a ready method within the products config, you can import the signals in here. So that's what we've done here. If we look at the application directory, we have our products application here and then within there, we have a variety of different files and folders. Apps.py is where you're going to find the app config subclass, and that's where you actually wire up the signals. Now, if we look at signals.py, we are going to send an email here, but we're not going to send this using any normal kind of SMTP service. What we're going to do is go back to the Django documentation, and we're going to change the email backend that's used here. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit on this documentation, and we can set it to the console backend. So instead of sending out real emails, the console backend will just write the emails that would be sent to standard output. Let's copy this setting here to set the email backend and we can go back to the project and we're going to go to settings.py and let's add that setting at the bottom here. So we've set the email backend to the console and that's a common practice in development. You don't want to be sending emails to your clients or to your users. So you set this email backend for development and indeed you can do this for testing as well. Now I want to test that the signal is working. So what I'm going to do is go to the terminal here and we're going to run the python manage.py shell command and that's going to bring up the Django shell here. And within the shell, let's import the user model and let's try and create a new user here with a random username and password. And you can see the output here. We've got the text signal fired and that's coming directly from our signal here and that's on line nine. And when the user is created for the first time, as it was here, this block will evaluate to true and it's gonna send the email to that user. So we know the signal is now working, it's configured in the application. Let's exit out of the shell and we're going to go back to our test directory here. So let's go to this directory and we're gonna add a new file called testsignals.py and we can use this to test any signals in the products application. Now I want to bring in some imports at the top here, so let's do that just now. We're going to import the test case class and we're importing that patch decorator from unit test.mock that we saw in the previous video as well as the user model. And now we can write our test and I'm just going to call this class user signals test and let's create a method in that class and I'm going to call this method test welcome email sent on user creation. So if we send the email when a user is created, it's vital to test that that is actually happening and we can use our signal in order to do that and we're going to write this test here. 
Now what I want to do is actually patch one of the functions and it's the send mail function here in the signals.py file. So again, we're gonna use the patch decorator from unit test.mock. So let's use that patch decorator here and we can pass the link to the particular method or function that we're going to mock here. So it's in the products application and the signals.py file. And when we call send mail in that particular location, that's what we're gonna mock in this test function here. And that mock is gonna be injected into the function. So let's do that here. And we're gonna call this mock send mail. So we've mocked out the send mail function for the duration of this test case. Now let's start by creating a new user, which should trigger the signal. We can do that with our user model and we're gonna call .objects.createUser. And let's pass some credentials in here. So we're passing a username and importantly, we need an email address for this to work as well as a password. The reason we need an email address is because the signal is going to try and send an email to instance.email. So the user must have an email attached to them. Once we've done that, we can check that send mail was called once. So we can do that by using our mock send mail object. And that has a function that we saw in the previous video called assert called once with. And if we go to the documentation in unit test.mock, you can see that this method here will assert that the mock object was called exactly once. And that call was with the specified arguments. So what do we want to pass into this mock send mail function? If we look at the signal here, we've got these messages here, the title and the message of the email, as well as the from email, the recipient list, and also this fail silently. Now what I'm gonna do is just copy these. So let's copy that signature and go back to our test signals.py file, and I'm gonna paste these in. And instead of instance.email, we're going to replace that with the email address for this user. So that's john at example.com. Let's add that into the list here, and that has to be a string as well. And that's gonna make sure that our send mail function is called once. So we can test all these conditions on the mock object just to make sure that things are working as expected and we have the expected behavior when these actions and signals occur in our Django application. And I want to create a second method here, a second test method. So I'm gonna copy the signature here and let's go down to the lines below this function and paste these in. And again, we're gonna patch the send mail function. And what we're gonna test here is not when a user is created, but we're gonna test what happens when a user is updated. So let's call the method test no email sent on user update. And in the body, I'm just gonna pass for now. And the reason we want to test this is because we want to make sure that we're not sending the welcome email when the user is not being created, but it's just being updated. So if we look at the sender here, it's the user object and the signal itself is the post save signal. So this is gonna be called this method whenever the user object is saved but we only want to send the welcome email when they are first created in the database. That's why we have this if statement, but imagine a developer accidentally removed that. We need the test to pick up on this. So we're gonna write a second test here and make sure that no email is sent when the user object is just updated. So let's copy the code from up here where we create a user object for the test. And we're gonna paste that down into this method here. Now that will trigger the signal, but what we can do on mock send mail is we can take that object here and I'm gonna paste this in. And I'm going to add a comment above this. We're going to reset the call count for the mock to zero. We can do that with the reset mock function. We're then going to update the user object. So what I'm gonna do when we create the user is just store that in a variable called user. And then below this comment here, let's change the user's email address and let's set it to john new at example.com. And then we're gonna call the save method. Now, importantly, when we call save here, it's gonna trigger the post save signal after it's saved the user object. And this function is therefore gonna be invoked, but because we're not creating the user, we don't expect to send the email. So we're gonna test those conditions now. Now beforehand, we called the assert called once with method. So we're gonna take mock send mail now, and we're gonna assert something different now. And it turns out there's another assertion method on the mock, and that's the method assert not called. And again, if we reference the unit test.mock documentation, this method will assert that the mock object or whatever it represents was not called in the processing of the code. So after we've written these tests, let's go back to VS Code and let's go to the terminal and we're gonna run python manage.py test. And this time we have 17 tests running and you can see them all passing and we're seeing that signal fired print statement. So what I'm gonna do is go back to signals.py and let's just remove that here from the code. We don't need that anymore. And let's try and rerun the test command and you can see that all tests are passing. So in this video, we've written some tests for this signal that will send a welcome email to the user when they sign up to the application. And we saw how to mock the call to send mail by using this patch decorator here from unit test.mock. 
and that means we can test the expected behavior of the application when a user is created for the first time, but also when a user is saved, and we don't want to send that email when the user is not created in the database. And that's the purpose of these two test methods that we've written. And if you want to know more about signals, there are other ones you can use. For example, instead of post save, you can have a pre-save signal that will run before the save method is called. And we also have the same signals for deletion. So for example, after you delete a record from the database, you can run a signal function when that happens. Anytime you use any of these, it's important to write tests for this functionality to make sure that your application works as expected and is robust to any changes that occur as developers make changes to the code through time. So that's all about signals. We are going to move on in the next video and we're going to look at modifying test settings.